Hello, third graders. I hope y'all had an awesome weekend. Um, today we are going to read the second to last chapter in our book. That means that we are nearing the end on Wednesday. We will finish it. But today, as you can see, the title is The Emancipation Proclamation. So we're going to be able to see, does Abraham Lincoln decide to issue it? Will it be too late? Let's go ahead and see. Remember, if you want to get your comfort item, go ahead and pause the video, go get your comfort item, then get somewhere where you can listen carefully and follow along to the story. Chapter 9, The Emancipation Proclamation. When we arrived back in 1862, there was one thing on my mind. How much time is left? I asked Jacob. He checked the watch and answered, 16 minutes. Abraham Lincoln turned to me. What does 16 minutes mean? Your cabinet said they would wait for you, but they are leaving in 16 minutes, I answered. You could have told me that earlier, Abraham Lincoln shouted. He was running toward the White House. I ran after him. You wouldn't listen, I argued. You should have made me listen, Abraham Lincoln said. He had such long legs. I had to take three steps for every one of his. We got to the White House in record time. Abraham Lincoln stopped so quickly, Jacob crashed into his back. How can I issue the Emancipation Proclamation and free the Southern slaves without a military victory? He asked, helping Jacob up. No one will listen to me. Bo raised his right hand. I swear to you, the North went to Antietam. I know it for a fact. I trust you, Abraham Lincoln replied, but how are we going to convince my executive cabinet? William Seward will never believe I went to the future, and he is the one advising me to wait. Abraham Lincoln rubbed his beard. Bo scratched his chin. I wonder why the telegram for Auntie Autumn hasn't come yet. I remembered that telegrams have to be issued from a telegraph office. Maybe there isn't a telegraph office near Auntie Autumn, I suggested. It could have taken a few days for someone to walk to one. It has happened before, Abraham Lincoln said, still stroking his beard. Sometimes the newspapers know about our defeats before I do. Soldiers talk to reporters. Days later, I get the official telegram. Zack stretched his legs. Go to the meeting. I'll run to the War Department and check the latest telegrams. He bent low, getting ready. He's a good runner, I assured the president. He's the fastest boy in the whole third grade. He even has a medal to prove it. You better hurry, Jacob advised. No problem, Zack took off. We rushed through the entry of the White House and bounded up the stairs. In his office, Abraham Lincoln took the Emancipation Proclamation out of his desk drawer. Then he said he needed a book. I cannot read the Emancipation Proclamation without it. He described the cover and told us the book was by Artemis Ward. We didn't understand why it was so important, but if he wasn't going to read the Emancipation Proclamation without it, we were going to help. We rushed around the office looking for the book. I found it in a basket under a pile of papers. I didn't look at it. I just handed it to the president. Then Zach ran in. He was out of breath. You made it, Jacob said, giving his brother a big slap on the back. Ten minutes to go. Zach handed President Lincoln a big stack of telegraph messages. Abraham Lincoln read through them, dropping each one on the floor as he went. A defeat, he said, crumbling up a message. No, he read another. No, no, no. Three more hit the floor. And just when we were starting to worry, he, he found it. Bully, he exclaimed, waving a telegram in the air. We won at Auntie Autumn. He shook Bo's hand. You were right. We won five days ago on September 17th. The telegraph was delayed. He reread the message. I'm going to have to talk to General McClellan. He made a grave mistake not pursuing the Southern Army. He tucked the telegram in his office. I'll speak to him tomorrow. Today I am too busy. Today I am going to free the slaves. We followed Abraham Lincoln into the executive cabinet room. All the men were gathering their papers preparing to leave. Sit! Abraham Lincoln commanded. Everyone fell back into chairs, except us. We stood behind the president. He took out the books we'd found. It turned out to be a book of jokes, and he read out loud a silly story. I wanted to wave at him, tell him to skip the story. We didn't have time. But President Lincoln loved jokes, and now that he didn't feel sad anymore, he wanted to tell a joke. He was the president and knew what he was doing, so I bit my bottom lip and waited. And when he was done joking around, President Lincoln did the most important thing he'd ever do. He issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Afterward, we rushed up to President Lincoln. 
You have changed the world, I said. You made America great, Zach added. Bo gave President Lincoln back his coins. We don't need these, Bo said. Jacob handed Abraham Lincoln the letter of resignation. You don't need this either. Abraham Lincoln shook hands with each boy. Then he gave me a hug. Thank you, he said. You're welcome, I replied. And then, before I could stop myself, I said, you should stay away from Ford's theater. I knew I shouldn't say anything, but my heart hurt thinking that this great man was going to be assassinated. But I love the theater, Abraham Lincoln said with a puzzled look. I hear they have a good theater in New York, I replied. Maybe you could go there instead. He smiled and said he'd think about it. But I knew he'd go to Ford's theater on April 14th, 1865, and his incredible life would be cut short. History was back on track, and we had time to spare. With a minute to go, we left the room and returned to Abraham Lincoln's office. Jacob pulled the cartridge out of the computer. We were excited to go back to school and tell Mr. C what we had done. And at the same time, we were sorry to say goodbye. It had been a great adventure. The green hole opened in the floor next to the president's desk. Jacob and Zach jumped in first. As the hole was closing, Bo turned his head to take one last look at the men from his books. He's writing it down, you know, he said to me. We held hands, ready to jump. Writing what? I asked. I turned my head to look where Bo was looking. Through the open door, I could see Abraham Lincoln sitting at the long meeting table. While the men chattered around him, he was writing on the back of, the, of an envelope, the same envelope that held his letter of resignation. What is he writing? I asked Bo. The hole was shrinking. The green fog was getting thinner. The beginning of the Gettysburg Address, he answered. Should we stop him? I asked. Abraham Lincoln really shouldn't be writing the Gettysburg Address before the Battle of Gettysburg. Should he? Bo just shrugged, and together we jumped. Okay, and we'll read our last chapter um, on Wednesday, and we'll see how all our story ends. But today, what we're going to do is, since we um, have been talking a lot in this book about the Emancipation Proclamation, on Epic, you'll see that Miss Bertram has assigned you this book. It's called the Emancipation Proclamation. It's a little bit longer, but I want you to go through and read it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to write about why the Emancipation Proclamation is important. While you're doing that, I want you to make sure that you are capitalizing the beginning of a sentence, you're ending the sentence with a punctuation, and make sure you're writing full sentences, guys. Remember, take your time. This is your schoolwork. This is a very important document, and I want you to make sure you completely understand it. Remember, if you have any questions, please bring it to the Zoom, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to email your teacher a picture of your writing when you're done. Have a great day, guys. Goodbye.